Hey everyone, in today's video, I will share with you the important changes we made to Flet's map control in the recently released version 0.25.0 of Flet. This includes new features requested by the community, but equally some breaking changes. Let's dive right away into it. So I'm in PyCharm as usual, and as you can see, I'm using Flat version 0.24.1. We are going to be upgrading to the latest flat version which is 0.25 and uh, we are going to be making use of the new features of the map control so in this article that i wrote some days ago concerning flat version 0.25.0 you can have a look at the new features we added so mobile ads you can have a look at the long list of enhancements we made we also modified the flat packaging structure we have some new properties and concerning the map, these are the new properties which we are going to explore in this video. We made a lot of bug fixes, deprecations, breaking changes and so on. So we are going to have a look at all of that concerning the map control. But to get started, I'm first going to upgrade to the latest flat version. To upgrade, you can use this command pip install flat all upgrade. I'm going to paste this here and you can see that it's going to install flat version 0.25.1 which is the latest flat version at the moment so i'm going to type in flat version once more and i have flat version 0.25.1 installed and you can see from here pycharm shows a warning unexpected argument cannot find reference map configuration in init why is this happening simply because of a breaking change we made in flat version 0.25.0 if you have a look at this article I wrote over here, map configuration has been removed from flat. All its properties have been moved into map itself. Below is how to migrate. So the migration is quite simple. You have over here, so this is the before. We had this configuration of type map configuration and it had all of these properties. As of now, configuration property has been removed along with the map configuration class. So both of them have been removed. And all what you have to do to migrate is simply to remove this line and remove this line. So which means we are bringing all of the properties which were present in map configuration into the map itself. So that's how simple the migration is. Simply copy all of these properties, move them into the map and remove the configuration and the map configuration class. That's what I'm going to do. You can see from here, as I said, unexpected argument because configuration is not an expected argument of the map it has been removed so what we are doing to migrate is simply copy these properties i'm going to cut them i'm going to get rid of this so pycharm also has this remove argument because it no longer exists and you simply have to paste all the arguments or all the properties present in the map configuration into the map itself so I repeat, map configuration has been removed from flat. It's a breaking change. That's why I really want to emphasize on it. So that's it for the breaking changes we made in the map control. And right now we are going to have a look at the enhancements we made in the map. So the first thing I'll do right now is to run this simple program we have here to see the result. So I can type from my terminal flat run main.py, press enter. And the map appears on a new window. So this is our map over here, as you can see. Uh, we are going to make use of these new methods which have been added to the map control. So we have rotate from, reset, rotation, zoom in, zoom out, zoom to, move to, center on. All of them have been documented here on the controls map. So you can see the documentation or you can read the documentation for each and every one of these methods. To test these methods, we are going to add under this map some buttons inside the row. So they will appear under the map and on click of these buttons, we are going to perform some actions on the map. So what I'm going to do is under the map, so we have page.add and under this map, you can see the map ends over here. We are going to be adding a row. This row will have some controls and the controls will be the buttons, as I said. So we are going to be adding a list of outline buttons. The first button will be rotate 90 degrees. The second button is going to be rotate minus 90 degrees. The third button is going to be moved to a certain point. We are going to complete that in a while. The next one will be zoom in. The next one will be zoom out. The next one will be zoom to. So we're going to complete it in a while. The next one center on. 
So we're going to start with the rotations. The first one is rotate 90 degrees. So when this button gets clicked, we want to rotate the map by 90 degrees. For that, we're going to specify an on-click event and we can make use of an anonymous function exactly like what we did over here. So we are going to simply say lambda e and then from here, we're going to call the function which is rotate from. But as you can see, the problem is we don't have a reference to the map. So we are unable to say this map dot rotate because we haven't stored this map variable or we haven't stored this map inside the variable. There are several ways in which you can do this. You can either use the inline Pythonic approach, which is to say M, and then you use the colon equals to. And from here, you can see it recognizes M as this map and it simply requests us to provide a degree. Or you can store this inside a variable, which means we remove this from here. We simply say M over here and here we store map inside a variable. So this is a kind of normal Python syntax. Or another approach is to use control refs. So we have a guide over here inside the flat cookbook. So we move to cookbook and then uh, control refs. We're going to see we make use of references. So we have this nice ref which you can make use of. So it depends on you and which approach you want to use. But I'm going to make use of the inline approach because it helps me to easily see my page and I already know which controls are inside my page and so on. So here we have the map. It is now defined as M. So M will stand for our map. And here we are saying that on click of this button, Lambda E, so E contains the event details. And here we are saying map dot rotate from. It takes one parameter, which is the degree. And it also takes an animation curve to specify which type of animation curve you want for the rotate animation. So rotate from, we are going to say 90 degrees. And let's have a look. And when you click the rotate 90 degrees button, it rotates by 90 degrees. The other buttons have no effect. That's normal. And we are going to be completing them right now. I'm going to copy this, paste it inside the rotate minus 90 and simply make this or set this to minus 90. Save and let's have a look. And you can see it rotates in the other direction. So rotate from has another parameter, which is the animation curve. It is of type animation curve, which is an enum. And as you can see, we have several animation curves over here. We can choose this one, for instance. But what I want to highlight about this is if you don't specify it, the map control has an animation curve property, which is going to be used as fallback. So if you don't specify the animation curve of the rotate event, so the animation curve to be used when rotating the map by 90 degrees, the map fallback animation curve is going to be used. So this value. By default, it is known, but if it is specified and this one over here in the method you're calling is not specified, then the map animation curve is going to be used as fallback. That's how it works. So I'm going to keep things simple. I'm just going to remove it from here. So the next one is the move to. We are going to, let's call it move to X. So move to a certain point X. And we're going to do exactly the same as in the ones above. We're going to use a lambda function. So lambda E and then M, which represents our map dot move to. So move to takes more parameters. It has destination, zoom, rotation, animation curve, animation duration, offset. So let's specify a destination, which is of type map latitude longitude. And inside this latitude longitude, we are going to specify the latitude 40 and the longitude 50. And let's have a look. And you can see that we move to the point 40, 50. I'm going to move back to a certain point. Let's say we are over here. And then I press once more on move to 40, 50. And you can see each time we go away and then press this button, we move to this particular point 40, 50, which is somewhere here. I don't know. So that's it. You can also specify a zoom if you want it to zoom. You can also specify a rotation. So if you want it to move over there and then rotate, so what I equally want to try is the animation duration. So let's add an animation duration it is of type int or duration. So if you specify an integer, it's going to be considered as milliseconds, but with the duration, you can be more specific. So I'm going to use the duration and you can see the duration takes microseconds, milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days. We are going to say five seconds. And I'm going to move away from the point and then we press on the button 
you can see it takes some more time to reach the point but we can equally say one second save and then if we move away you're going to see that it will be faster so that's the role of the animation duration feel free to play with it the next one we have is the zoom in we're going to do exactly the same lambda e and then m which represents our map zoom in and zoom in has animation curve and animation duration as parameters so zoom in is going to zoom by one zoom level let's save it and have a look so zoom in you can see it zooms by one zoom level into the map and you can also specify an animation duration or an animation curve to further control the animation so let's say we want it to take four seconds i'm going to zoom out manually with the mouse and then i'm going to click on zoom in So that's the effect of zoom in we're going to do exactly the same with zoom out click on zoom out and you can see how awesome the, the animation is we equally have a zoom to so here you can specify the zoom level you want and here you have the animation curve you have the animation duration so the zoom level let's say five Let's save it and then zoom to. When you press zoom to, the zoom level is already 5, that's why you don't see any effect. But if you zoom in and then you press zoom to, it's going to move back to the zoom uh, level 5. So let's say zoom out and then zoom to. You can see it moves to the zoom level 5. So now we have center on. And center on takes as parameter a point, a zoom, an animation curve, an animation duration. We we'll need to save this. And then over here, let's click on center on. Hmm. Seems like it doesn't work. Clicking on center on. But I can't see a change. So it seems like this center on has an issue, has a bug. Uh, really sorry for that. I'm going to have a look at it immediately after I record this video and fix it for the next release. All right, that's it for today's video, guys. I really wanted to mention all of these new methods we've added to the map control and share with you how to use them. And as I did at the beginning, mention this uh, breaking change we made in the map configuration. All right, we've come to the end of today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already for more exciting flight content. And as usual, if you face any issues or have any questions, please drop a comment and I will respond to you as soon as possible. This was the Etika Boy. Thanks for watching.